Hi guys, today I'll show you how it's possible to convert this 4 euro Raspberry Pi Pico into a full blown 24 channel logic analyzer and protocol decoder. First we install needed firmware and software and then I'll show you some practical examples on how to decode some UART, I2C and 1Y signals. Let's get started. First you need to install the analyzer software from this repository. Browse to the release section and here you will find a zip file that you need to download and unzip in a directory of your own choice. Python is also needed, so you just select the latest release. The install is very simple and remember you can find all the necessary links in the video description down below. Now browse to the directory where you unzipped all the logic analyzer files. In the main directory, you will need to create a file called Python CFG. In this Python CFG file, you specify the path to this Python DLL file. Save the CFG file and now we are ready to start the logic analyzer software. But first, let's program the firmware into the Raspberry Pi Pico. In this location, you can see all the firmwares for the Raspberry Pi Picos. You can see there's quite a few variants here. Just select the one that fits your target. Download this zip file and unzip it into a directory. So here I have just unzipped all the firmwares and we are now ready to download it to the Raspberry Pi Pico. So just insert the Raspberry Pi Pico into a USB port. Then this drive will pop up and it's just as simple as dragging this UF2 file into the drive here, then the software will be programmed and we are now ready to start the analyzer software with the correct Raspberry Pi Pico analyzer. So let's start the logic analyzer. First here we see this very nice splash screen and here we are. Let's select the Raspberry Pi Pico. This is on COM18 and open the device. We can see that this is the correct firmware that we have version 6. This is the newest one. So we are ready to make a capture. So here we have the first screen here. All the first 8 channels out of 24 are enabled. And there's a label here on the first one called RX. We want to look at this UART and uh, this will be running at a bow rate of 9600 bow. So we have like a 10 times higher sample rate, 100,000 uh, hertz. We have 10 samples just before the trigger. And then we have, let's say 10,000 samples after the trigger is detected. And uh, we have this edge trigger on channel one. And uh, the edge goes from high to low, meaning this is a negative edge. So let's accept this. And um, I'll just show you here the channels. We have channel one, that's on GPIO2, and I have connected a UART TX signal into this pin. And you can see here all the other channels where they are located. So this is very handy to have. Let's try and then sample something. The device is now triggered or it's armed and we we'll, let's uh, send in a signal. So I have this terminal program here. I have some macros that I can set. So there's one called hello world and there's a string called one, two, three on macro five. So let's try and send macro five. And we see here that the analyzer got triggered and it is here where the signal goes low. And we can just have a look on a bit more data here, scrolling this forth and back, and we can see there's actually some data here. So let's try and decode this. So we will just search for a UART. And we need to configure the pins. The RX pin is on RX. And let's see down here, what else do we have? We can set the bow rate. 9,600. 
And I think that's actually this. And we will see the data format in hex. And we already see this result here on the screen. So we got three bytes and uh, the hex values are 31, 32 and 33. And that's actually one, two and three. So we can just try and set the decoder to not in hex, but we could do it in ASCII, for example. And let's try and then repeat the capture. And let me send that telegram one more time. And let's see here. We got it triggered. And we'll let's see on some more samples. And now we see here one, two and three. Now we have the ASCII representation up here. We can just try and send another telegram and then we can just repeat the last settings. And now the device is armed and we can see the LED on the Raspberry Pi Pico is blinking. And let's try and send another telegram. This is hello world. And we send that and let's have a look. The device got triggered and we can just zoom in the data here like this. And up here you see the decoded data, hello world. So this is a very easy way of decoding, you know, this serial data stream. It's possible to do on an oscilloscope, but this is a very fancy way to do it. So this video is sponsored by PCBWay, who offer a wide range of manufacturing services for your projects, including PCBs from very low cost prototype boards to more advanced PCBs, all the way up to 60 layers and also with specialist FR4 materials. You can also get your rigid flex PCBs made if you want to make something a little bit more interesting. They also offer a wide range of PCB assembly options. That means getting your PCBs assembled with components on both sides of the board, whether they be surface mount or through hole parts. PCBWay also offer some mechanical services such as CNC machining, sheet metal fabrication, 3D printing, and also when you're making something with a little bit higher volume, you can also get some injection molding done here. So don't forget to visit pcbweight.com so here we have the setup for the i squared c debugging i have my favorite development board here based on an esp32 it's connected to this display via an i squared c bus and i squared c is also out here on this connector and it's connected to the debugger here on channel one and two so we can see here that the Raspberry Pi Pico is armed and is ready to make a sample of the communication between the ESP32 and the display here. So let's have a look on the waveforms. So let's configure the capture for uh, the i c signals. So here we have the sampling frequency of 400 kHz, 10 pre-samples and then 10,000 post-samples. And on channel one, we have SCL and channel two, we have SDA. And as you know, on I squared C, the bus will go from high to low. The idle state of the I squared C bus is high and it will trigger on the negative edge here. So we are ready to start the sampling. So we will arm the device and wait for some data. And I can just download my code here for the display. So whenever the communication will start, we will see some data flowing on the I2C bus. So let's just wait a second and check it out. And here we got some signals and let's see what we have here. So we can see there's a lot of communication going on. And if we want to decode it, we will need to find the I2C decoder. So let's see where we have it. So it's here. And we just need to configure it. 
So we have SGL is on the SGL line and SDA we have on the SDL line. And we see that it already decoded the data here. So let's zoom in. So we know that the display is actually also on address 3C hex. And we can see the decoded data here. And there's even more communication out here. And down here in the bottom, it's possible to move to move the window forth and back, so we can zoom in on the regions that we're interested in. All right, let's have a look on some one-wire uh, decoding. This is actually the reason why I started playing with this uh, logic analyzer. Uh, I had some problems uh, decoding some of the data and it's much easier to have this decoder on top Although that you on the oscilloscope can see all the signals, it's quite difficult to decode it, or it will take a very long time. So let's try and uh, hook up some one-wire devices and have a look on what's going on there. So here we see the complete setup of my one-wire debugging. So here we have an R squared C to one-wire interface. This is the, this is the DS. 2480 and uh, the one wire signals is then fed into the DS18 B20. The one wire signals is also fed into the logic analyzer over here on channel 1. So let's write some code and uh, see if we can capture some of the one wire signals and decode that. Here we see the trace of the one wire communication. So we see there's like a presence pulses here. So let's zoom out a bit and see if we have some more data coming in. There is something here. Let's have a look on that. We can try and zoom in the data itself. Like that. And then let's zoom up, move back a bit here. Like that. So let's zoom Again. So we can see that this has been decoded as a search from command. And let's see if we can see some of the ROM data. Need to see some more samples here. We have a huge chunk of data coming in here. And let's move a bit further in. And here we actually have the ROM data. So you can see here it starts with 2832 and uh, 28 is actually the family code for the DS18B20 temperature sensor. You can see this is this year. And we can also verify this I also dumped uh, the ROM here in my code. So you can see it starts with 28 and then 32. So this is the same things as we can see here in the, in the decoder. And we can also try and move further out and see if there are some data afterwards. And here we see some of the other data. Let's try and zoom in on that. So here we have some of the decoded data. And there's a reset pulse once more. And here you can see the decoded data for the next packages. And there's a skip ROM command. And then we have some data coming in. So this is a quite useful tool for debug debugging on your different protocols and also if you just need a generic uh, logic analyzer.